Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to tonight's episode of Public Domain Theater. You know, many people have asked me, Paul, what makes a movie so bad it's good? And I say, that's a good question, insert name here. There are many things that any great bad movie needs to have. Bad acting, bad directing, bad writing, those are the obvious ones. Some also include bad cinematography, bad lighting, and bad musical scores. But then there are those that go the extra mile and include spiders on strings, costumed maniacs, and bad dubbing. I'm happy to announce that tonight's film has all of that and more. I give you Bloody Pit of Horror. For those of you who don't know, that means the words coming out of the actors' mouths do not match the movement that their mouths are making. And then some extra words are added in to hopefully match the timing of the initial dialogue. Sometimes it actually enhances the film, see anything with Jackie Chan. Sometimes it happens for no reason, see Alice Cooper's film Monster Dog, where all of the English-speaking actors were dubbed into Italian broken English. Or just take my word for it and watch this film. Bloody Pit of Horror was made in 1965 in Italy with its original title, Il Boria Scarlato, and is based on the writings of notorious French libertine, the Marquis de Sade. Director Massimo Papio, who is credited here as Max Hunter, creates such a technicolor dungeon that the bad guy, the Crimson Executioner, comes off like a third-rate Batman villain. I don't mean Christian Bale's angst-ridden Batman, I mean Adam West's spanks-needing Batman. The credits may read filmed in Psychovision, but I believe that cheese rama would have been more appropriate. Star Mickey Hargitay was married to silver screen bombshell Jane Mansfield, and they had three kids together, including Law & Order SUV star Mariska Hargitay. Mickey chews on every bit of scenery he possibly can. He injects some crazy, funny energy into the film, and I'm grateful that he did because the film's hero, Rick, played by Walter Brandy, billed as the more American-sounding Walter Brandt, is pretty ineffectual, and all of the women act as if they have been force-fed Xanax and pushed in front of the camera. The plot is fairly standard. A bunch of women are taken to a castle to be photographed for a series of horror novels. Once there, they discover that they are not alone. The castle's steward is a man who believes he is the reincarnation of a 17th century executioner. He then goes about killing his new guests in what I'm sure is meant to be disturbing scenes of death by torture in 1965, but come across today as laughable scenes of death by ketchup smears. The torture devices are not what made me laugh the most, though. There is a scene where one woman is posing for her shoot with a guillotine when there is a skip in the audio like it's recorded on a phonograph record. Ask your parents, kids. It continues for about a minute and plays the same notes over and over. It's like the sound guy went, ah, screw it, we blew our audio budget hiring a new voice cast. Now, where's my grappa? <laughs> if you don't have any grappa handy, don't worry. I'm sure you'll still enjoy tonight's film. Get your popcorn and your soda, make note of the nearest emergency exit, and switch off your cell phone or pager. Public Domain Theater is proud to present Mickey Hargitay, Walter Brandy, and Luis Sobrato, starring in Bloody Pit of Horror. <laughs> This fifth day of December in the year of our Lord, 1648, by virtue of the power vested in us by our noble sovereign, this tribunal of Chabai sentences you, the crimson executioner, to death. 
You will die by one of the very instruments you devised to torture and kill your innocent victims. You dared to take into your own hands the laws of both God and man. You set yourself up as both judge and executioner. You caused inhuman suffering and took life not from any sense of justice, but from hatred and self-gratification. You showed no mercy to your victims, and no mercy will be shown to you. You will never kill me. Move along. I'll return and be avenged. Turn around. Fools. All of you. I am the Crimson Executioner. <laughs> This day shall be written in blood. No man can judge me. I am the supreme law. I shall have my revenge. The seal of this tribunal will entomb forever both your body and your evil soul. Let no man dare to break the seal. You are accursed, eternally damned, as are these dungeons, as is this castle that has witnessed such indescribable horrors. Your castle will stand throughout the centuries as a reminder of the barbarism and cruelty committed within its walls. May the dust of time not erase from the memory of man the infamy of the Crimson Executioner.
Seems exactly what we've been looking yeah. for. From here, it looks great. Just what we need. I think we should be able to wrap up our work here in a day. And yeah, this'll look good. Come on, Nancy. Gosh, I'm stiff from that long ride. It's made to order. Yeah. We don't want to lose you. Hmm, sure looks gloomy. How would you girls like to have a castle this old to live in? You'd have to be a creep to live in a place like this. I'd love to have a house like this all for myself. Imagine the peace and beauty of living all alone. <laughs> You're a funny one, all right. <laughs> all right, girls. Wonder what it looks like inside. What's wrong? Are you tired? I don't know what it is, Perry. I just feel very uneasy. No. Susie. Let me alone, Raoul. Don't be like that, baby. Everybody will see it. Have it your way. Are you all dead? Lay you any odds you want, our dear publisher will wind up saying, this place isn't suitable after all. Let's go home. Hello, is everybody out? If they're all out, how can anyone be in the house? Huh, the brain has spelled it out. I'm not just a dumb blonde, you know. Who says you're a blonde? Must be in. Hello, why doesn't anybody answer? Maybe nobody lives here. What a nuisance. Someone should have told me the castle's empty. We might as well try to get in anyway. Maybe one of the boys could scale that wall. That's a job for Tarzan. Who's gonna volunteer to climb the wall? <laughs> okay, okay. Here comes Uncle Perry, the greatest acrobat in the world. Boy, I bet he gets us inside. Yeah, you're right. Three years for unlawful breaking and entering. Take care, Perry. Tell me a bonus for this little stunt, a double whiskey. <laughs> well, what about that? I still think you're playing with fire. Ah, you should know me by now. I'm not the kind of man to let obstacles get in my way. I'm a man of action. Well, what do we do now? We follow the leader. What else? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the old family. Well, uh, let's go. <laughs>
what a funny place this is. Looks like a Frankenstein film set. Too impressionable, Kinuyo. Mm -hmm. Raul! 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 these childish jokes all the time. Raoul. Raoul. Take off that silly costume. <gasps> these uninhabited castles always have their family skeletons. Uninhabited? There's not a trace of dust around here. Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm very sorry. Nobody answered the doorbell and we thought the castle was empty. Could we speak to the owner? I'd like a word with him about a business matter. Could you take us to him? Follow me. Let's go. Of you wait in there. Stop where you are. How dare you force your way into my castle like this? What do you want here? I want to apologize. We didn't think anyone lived here, that's all. It's no excuse for trespassing. I don't like having my privacy disturbed. I'm sorry, sir. You're quite right. My name is Parks. I'd like to explain. We've been scouting for suitable locations to photograph material for book jackets. I'm a publisher. That's no concern of mine. Look here, I'd like to show you one of my books. I'm preparing an anthology of horror. He told you to stay where you were. We took the liberty of coming in here, only because no one answered our knocking at the door. I don't like intrusion. I insist that you leave my castle immediately. Could you make just one exception? We've been on the road for several days. Everybody's so tired. I don't want any visitors here. I'd be only too glad to pay, of course. Pay? Now you're beginning to annoy me, Mr. Parks. Uh, I know my friend didn't mean to offend you, and we ask you to forgive us. Everybody, we've been told to shove off. The master of the house doesn't like having visitors around. What? Again? Oh, no. Not after all I went through to get you in here. So we're right back where we started. One castle's too modern, one's too old. Why don't we build our own and get it over with? Susie, 
But wouldn't it cost an awful lot of money to build one, huh? Oh, can't you change his mind? We're all tired. Well, I'm tired, too. But we have no choice. We've been told to go, and that's it. Let's get moving quickly, huh? Peters. Wait. Perhaps I was a little too hasty, Mr. Parks. I'm not usually so inhospitable. I realize you must all be very tired. You see, I don't usually receive people. You can stay here overnight, but I'll have to ask you to leave first thing in the morning. Thank you, sir. We really do appreciate your kind hospitality. Do you mind if we take a few pictures? All right. But please remember, I don't like to be disturbed. My servants will show you the chambers where you can do your work. Perfect. Let's get to work, girls. We mustn't waste any time. Go and change, quickly. Dermot, you'd better check out the setting we need. Edith, you go along with him. Good girl. Come on, Edith. Don't go near the dungeons. They're absolutely out of bounds for everybody. Okay, we won't. Get moving, Dermot. We're in a hurry. I'll bet Max will flip over this one. Can you imagine finding a thing like this here? Wasn't it lucky? I'll take credit for that. I found it. Yeah. Food for everybody. Hey, Max, I want a bonus for finding this thing. All right, we'll see about the bonuses. Now eat It'll quickly, It'll be huh? perfect for the Skeletrix series. Hey, that fine, looks great. Boys, fine, but now let's get to work. I'll take the two to the girls, right? No, I'll take care of that myself. <clears throat> This will make. Now, what's all this nonsense? I'm just like a father to you girls. Turn around. We have to get into our costumes. Okay, have your little games, but hurry up. We haven't any time to fool around. We've got work to do. You can turn around now if you want. Edith, bring the girls downstairs. We can't afford to waste any time. All right. As usual. Nah, bottle of wine, they call it. It tastes like water. <laughs> yeah, it's awful, isn't it? But I know where we can find real wine. I discovered where the cellar is. Come on, I'll show you. See ya. Come on, Terry. I wouldn't mind being the owner of this castle. You can have it. It gives me the creeps. Skeletons don't have nerves. What do you mean it gives you the creeps?
the ghosts. Come on. This way. Now, don't breathe. Perfect like that. Hmm. All right. Hold the pose. I want to take another shot. Uh, Edith, hand me the other camera, will you? Thanks. Now, don't move, darling. Hold it. You make a beautiful corpse, you do. Just keep it. That's right. It's no fun being dead. Nobody ever said it was. You mean it? You were very convinced. Okay, gang, oh, Just come imagine on, what Daddy will one. say when he sees this photo. Go and change now. Yeah. Okay, Susie, it's your turn now. Sure, here I am, but where's Perry? He's in it, too. Here I am. <laughs> your personal skeleton, always ready to die at the hands of a beautiful woman. No, How are you going to change him? Annie's first? That's fine with me. You're never around when you're needed. Right, but look what I dug up for you. Oh. <laughs> I'll go. Yeah. <laughs> Rick, can I have your knife a minute? Thanks. Kinuyo, what is it? Just a little homesick, I guess. Are you all asleep over there? Get behind that camera, Dermot.
Oh, Nancy, honey, give me the feeling of a cat. You know what I mean. Meow. Meow. Shh. Meow. No, Nancy, that's too domesticated. I want you to think wild, fierce. Meow. 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 Can't you think like an alley cat? For instance, you're about to fight another cat for a fish head or something. Meow. No, no, Nancy, that's the intellectual approach. You'll never be an alley cat. Let's try something else. I've got an idea. There. Now, raise your leg up. Up, up. Now, come. Oh. That, that, that's it. That's it. Now, imagine you're floating in the air like a thistle blown by the wind. That's it. Beautiful. No, no, not like that. You've got to go up. Gently. That's right, baby. Now, hold it. No, no. Can't you keep that arm over your head? Now everything's in place. Arm, leg, head, everything. Now, don't move. Come on, Nancy, get that lovely foot of yours up like a feather, like a thistle blown by the wind. No, no, I can't, Herbert. It's too heavy. Uh, I do, can't. Oh, do it for me, baby. Let's fly together. Hold it. Hold it. Murmur about here. There. Dermot, can we take a break for a few minutes? No, no, we've got to be finished before morning. Uh, put the spots over there. Okay. What are you doing here? I'd like to see the owner of the house. It's not possible. My master doesn't want to be disturbed. But tell him... I said it's impossible. Your master has a right to his privacy, but that's no way to speak to a lady. Rick. You met the owner of the house. What's he like? It's difficult to say, really. He was half hidden behind a table. Have you noticed the windows? They're all barred. What a strange place. If I was still a reporter, I bet I could discover a lot of interesting facts about this castle. Rick, but why are you wasting your time on horror stories? You should be doing the kind of work you were cut out for, reporting. Oh, I guess you're right, but I'm a little lazy. I've been taking the easy way out by doing this. I started out with the usual dreams and found out there's more money in writing this kind of commercial book. Edith, I realize I'm being indiscreet, but why did you want to speak to the owner of the castle? Just curiosity. Nothing more than that. Everything's ready, Dermot. Can I go? Not more than a few minutes, though. Time's running short. You bet. Come on, Susie. Don't call me like that. Then come on. But where? Oh, come on. Okay, I'm all set. Everybody out of the way. That's right. Hold that pose, Perry. Don't move. I'll be done in a minute. Now, here we go. <laughs> Yell. I didn't hear anything at all. Come along. Mm -hmm. Where are you taking You'll find out. Look at that. What is it? I don't know. Maybe it was an old torture cell. You know these old castles. <laughs> Nothing in it. Let me alone, Raoul. I'm scared. Susie. Susie. There's no point in disturbing my master. He's been informed already of what has happened down here. 
And he hopes that you will all remain calm. The rope was badly worn, Rick. We overlooked that, I'm afraid. Well, what are you going to do now? Hmm. I don't know. We'll see. Remember, Rick, even the master of the house suggested that we keep calm. Tomorrow we notify the police. What do you mean, tomorrow? Listen. After all, it was only an accident. A tragic one. But an accident. And besides, it's too late now. Look, Max, this double talk leaves me cold. What do you really mean? Well, well, I'm an editor. You've got to see my point. I have a deadline to meet. I know exactly how you feel, girls. But we must finish our work before daybreak. With poor Perry lying dead? Oh, it's a big tragedy. You know, Perry was like a son to me. Don't you think I have a heart like hmm. the rest of you? How do I know? I never had a chance to see it. Perry would have known what I meant. Yeah, but he's dead. And I want to go on living. I'll double your salary. My life's worth more than that. Triple it. Okay, it's a deal. Me too. Then let's get back to work. Where's Susie? I think she went off with Raoul. It's just like her. They always disappear at the wrong moment. We'll worry about her later. Let's go back to work now. Well, I thought I'd seen just about everything. But this kind of bargaining is really more than I can stand. Rick, look at this. Huh? What is it? It's the negative of the photograph I took right when the accident occurred. Poor Perry. What a terrible thing. What's this? What's that strange shadow near the frame of the door? That almost looks like a man's head. Yes, it does. That's exactly what I thought. But it just can't be. Still, it does look like a man's head with a hood on. show up more clearly on the print. It should. We'll see in a minute. I've done the best I could. Of course, it's only a small detail. Hmm. There. This is the maximum enlargement I can make here. Of course, it's still not very clear. Hmm. Well, this doesn't help us very much, I'm afraid. It's hardly at all visible. Huh? Do you think the negative could have been defective? No, it was perfect. May I see that photograph? I heard about the accident that took place tonight. A most appalling accident. Unfortunately, it's blurred. Yeah, it was out of focus. Perhaps this will sound strange. But I have something to tell you. Let me provide an explanation of the shadow in your photograph. Have you ever heard of the Crimson Executioner? 
Who did you say? The Crimson Executioner. He was a maniac and a killer who was put to death for his crime centuries ago. He was buried in his own castle. What you don't know is that this is the castle where the Crimson Executioner lived and died. When I came here, the castle had been uninhabited for centuries. For me, it was ideal because I desired solitude. Everybody else feared the curse that had been placed on it. When they sealed up his tomb, the Crimson Executioner swore that he would avenge himself. He was a man of extraordinary physical strength. Obsessed by an ideal of purity. For centuries, he was entombed. There in the dungeons, and only a seal has protected mankind from his supernatural powers. If the shadow in the photograph is the Crimson Executioner, I fear anything might happen. I had to tell you. Well, I can see you two already know each other. I've never had the pleasure. This is the first time I've seen this lady. I must retire now. I'm a creature of habit. I hope you will sleep well. Good night. Edith, I, I know the accident upset you. You're terribly tired. What happened was a very bad shock for you. Stop crying now. Go to Canoe Young. She's been through more than the rest of us. Too daring. No. I bet Max will like it. He always does. <laughs> Hi, girls. Has Susie come back yet? No. Maybe we should go on without her. She'll be along. You'll make a big hit in that costume, Manny. Won't I, too? What? Oh, no. What's gotten into you? You mustn't hide those beautiful legs of yours. Your world of beauty. With their sordidness, the day of the Crimson Executioner has now come. I've been wondering about the owner of this castle. Well, if you want my opinion, I think he's slightly off his mat. You would be, too. If you lived isolated in this place, you'd end up the same way he is. <laughs> hey, Dermot. Yeah? Look at this. This must be where the Executioner was killed, if the legend is true. What is it? It looks like a coffin. No, it was a medieval instrument of torture. The infamous Iron Maiden. say that this was an accident. Come on. Just as I thought. The rope wasn't worn, it was cut. At this point, there's only one explanation. Deliberate murder. Deliberate murder? But why, Rick? It doesn't make any sense. That's what we've got to find out. Any idea where Raoul is? Raoul? 
No, no, I don't mean he had anything to do with this. But perhaps he saw who did it. He was near Susie all the time. Here, take this. My car is the fastest we have. Go to the nearest police station and try and get help. Okay, Rick, I will. But how about you? Hmm? What are you going to do? Stay here? With a murderer at large, you're all in danger. I know, but it's impossible to leave with things as they are. And we've got to find Raoul. He might have some evidence. I'll be as fast as I can. How much longer do we have to wait now? We get paid. Why should you care? Yeah, you get pretty by the minute, girls. Take a look at this, Max. I have a new idea. I don't want the girls to know this yet. Susie's been murdered. What's that? So you like the idea? Oh, uh, sure. It's great. We'd better watch out. Dermot's already on his way to the police station. Don't tell the girls. They'd only get panicky. But then Perry was killed, too. We completely agree, then. Well, what do we do now? I'll have a look around. You'd better stay with the girls. See you later. your master right away. No, he doesn't want to see anybody. It's urgent that I see him no matter what, understand? I said you can't see him. Edith, what are you doing here? I want you to see what I found. I'm sure you recognize him. Edith, what's your portrait doing in this castle? Then you do know the owner. Yes, Travis and I were engaged. Travis Anderson. Isn't he the actor who disappeared several years ago? Yes, he used to be a muscle man in costume films. It all happened so suddenly, so unexpectedly. He left without a word. He just vanished. He's always been a little strange. Even with me, he seemed so cold. Yet I'm certain that he really loved me. In all this time, I haven't stopped wondering why he ever disappeared like that. Now I found him here in this castle. I thought I recognized his voice, and now that I've found this, I know it's Travis. I must try to speak to him. Edith, we have no time for that. You've got to trust me. What is it? I'll tell you later. Where's Canuglio? I left her downstairs when I went to find Travis. There's not a moment to lose. We must find her. What's happened, Rick? Don't ask any questions. Hurry. We've got to reach the others. It's important that we all stay together. But what's going on? I don't understand. Can you? I know it. You must save yourself while there's still a chance. Don't you see? It's a diabolical trap. It's impossible for anyone to reach me. These wires are connected to the bows on the wall. The slightest touch will release the arrows in every direction, and anyone nearby will be killed. Nobody can stop the mechanism that operates. The spider. It has poison in its claws. I'll be killed. The moment it reaches me. Now it's hopeless. Watch out, Rick. Don't do it, Rick. You'll be killed. I tell you, it's 
awkward. Don't do it, Rick. Leave me. It's no use. <laughs> Come any closer. You're mad to risk your life like this. <laughs> Rick. Get out of the castle at once, at once. No, no, Rick, no. Not without you. Do what I tell you. Go away, Edith. Go away. Don't worry about me. Derbert will be back here soon with the police. It's no use. We've been locked no. in. No! What do we do? Max! Max, what's happening? Where are the others? I don't know, but don't lose your head. Just come on down here. Go and tell Rick that we need him. All right. We have to get out of here. Rick! Rick, all the doors are locked. We can't get out. Keep calm, Edith. We'll make it somehow. Just a minute.
Don't come any nearer. Don't touch me. You were the murderer. Now I know it, Travis. How could you? You're a monster! A monster! Oh. Oh. You. You no longer mean anything to me. Even though I missed you when I abandoned the world. I was forced to retreat to this castle. Mankind is made up of inferior creatures. Spiritually and physically deformed. Who would have corrupted the harmony of my perfect body. to the isolation of this castle to avoid the contagion of human sentiment. And a woman's love. Oh. Would have destroyed me. It's because of that. I abandoned you. Travis, you've lost your sanity. You're an egotist. Obsessed with your sick thoughts. You're wrong, Edith. Last night I had a moment of weakness because of you. When I first caught sight of you, I said you could stay, together with your friends. But that was a mistake. I know of only one who was never overcome by weakness. The Crimson Executioner. He despised your world. As passionately as I do. Look at him. Look at him. body was preserved intact through all these centuries undisturbed. His spirit lives in me, and I'll continue his mission of vengeance. This is the sacred duty I've sworn to. We're alike. Profaned his tomb and broken the seal that imprisoned his great spirit. His power has been released at last. And his noble crusade against sin lives again through me. The black fire of the long-awaited vengeance is here. And your friends cannot escape. The Crimson Executioner has passed judgment. Witness the glory of his return. And you'll pay just like the others. <laughs>
punished for your lechery. Two. The Crimson Executioner will torture you. Yes, will torture you. Till death. just a small portion of the torture that awaits you. I promise you that none will escape the wrath of the Crimson Executioner. As for Rick, this is how he will die. Why are you doing this? Why don't you let us go? What have we done to you? You're torturing innocent people. Come back to your senses. You're the owner of this castle. Not the Crimson Executioner. Oh, see. I am the Crimson Executioner!
I can't stand it anymore. Let me go. The Crimson Executioner invented the torture of icy water for creatures like you. <laughs> Vengeance needs blood. The Crimson Executioner cries out for blood. mustn't worry about me. I'm not in danger. Try to find the others if you can, Rick. 
They're in Anderson's hands. He took them to the dungeons. He's insane. He thinks he's the Crimson Executioner. You've got to stop him, or he'll kill them all. Hurry, Rick! Yes, but where are you, Edith? Watch out! What more do you want with me? You're insane. You can't get away with this. Let me out of here. I'll pay you anything you want. Uh, what are you going to do now? Uh, oh. This fire will purify your miserable soul. No. You're no. impure. This fire will no. cleanse you. No. no, you can't do this to me. Stop. 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 No, I don't want to die like this. No. No, let me out. No, I don't want to die like this. No, no, let me out.
pay too. No! 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 Let me go! Stop! Let me go! Oh, Travis, don't! Don't! Oh, please stop! Oh, please let me go! Oh. You're mad! No! No! Don't do this to me! executioner has risen from his tomb. Your atonement has just begun. It's done. I killed the right. Ah. It's not true. No. It's impossible. No. They'll all die. Oh! Ah! No, I can't stand this. Oh, no, I beg you, Travis. No. What you're doing is insane, Travis. Oh, oh my God! The Crimson Executioner! No! Go away! I am the Crimson Executioner! Rick! It's impossible. It can't be. It's impossible that he's alive, I tell you. I killed him myself. I saw him die. It wasn't me you murdered. You hit the dead body of poor Raoul. I put his corpse in the tower, and that's what your arrow hit. You'll have to try again. Kill him! Go on. Go on. Kill him, I said!
my perfect body. In the poisonous clutches of the lover of death. completely mad. Like the crimson executioner, Travis was obsessed with a dream of absolute purity and physical perfection. That's why he retired to the isolation of this castle. Our intrusion into his world was too much for him. And it was then that he assumed the identity of the crimson executioner and decided to carry out the ancient legend of revenge. His striking resemblance to the real executioner made it easy for him to believe his own hallucination. Striking resemblance. Anderson, in his folly, created the legendary executioner in his own image. The crimson executioner's been dust for centuries. It was terrible. Please take me away from this castle. It was a nightmare. I won't write any more horror stories. The man that said life is stranger than fiction made no mistake. I'm sorry I made you sit through that. I should have just told you to come back in an hour and 20 minutes and catch the plot wrap-up that Edith and Rick provided. Would have saved us some torture. There is one thing that they forgot to mention in their summation, though. Travis was so into the perfection of his body that he wolfed down buckets of ultimate nutrition muscle juice. He couldn't get enough of the stuff. The real cause of his death? Stomach cramps. The filmmaker and his cast never really shook the stigma of the Italian horror genre, although their names were Americanized in several different ways. Director Massimo Papillo not only went as Max Hunter, but also as Ralph Zucker. Walter Brandy was Walter Brandt, and then oddly re-Italianized his name as Walter Bagari. Luis Sobrato went as Louise Barrett and Liz Barrett with either one T or two Ts. As for the film star Mickey Hargitay, Although he was born Miklos Hargate, he changed it to Mickey when he began acting, and he remained Mickey for his entire career. And for his efforts, he will be forever known as Jane Manfield's second husband and Mariska Hargate's only dad. If you'd like to leave me a message, say hello, or suggest a film, you can contact me through Facebook, Public Domain Theater, Twitter, at Cherokee underscore Jack, or YouTube, FL Warmer. Don't forget that you can see the live version of the show monthly. Public Domain Theater Live at Popcorn Noir in East Hampton, Massachusetts is a lot of fun. The movie is free and the food is excellent. Make sure to check out Popcorn Noir's website, www.easthamptonpopcorn.com, for showtimes. Until next week, this is Paul Fish saying, what an amazing, wonderful film that was. There are many things that make any great bad movie needs to have bad... Okay, can we go back to the... No, I, 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 I missed something. It's, it's better than having it going slow, um, but I messed up something. <laughs> the, no, it's, it's, it's moving like very jerkily for some reason. It's not really smooth at all. Quit moving it, jerky. See, this is why I should practice. And
friends that Jane Mansfield was her mother. No, it's rumored that she was decapitated. What they actually found in the car was her wig. She, I mean, she was killed in the car crash, but she was never actually, she wasn't decapitated. No, she wasn't decapitated. No, no. Fun facts here on Public Domain Theater.